Servopedic Neck Relief is a proud sponsor of the Expect Miracles podcast. It is a super comfortable and adjustable cervical support that you can use for just minutes a day to relieve headaches and neck tension. It comfortably supports your head and neck while lying down or sitting up. Because the Servopedic Neck Relief is also adjustable, you can choose the exact level of neck support you need. The amount of cervical support is increased with a simple push-up on the front of the device or instantly decreased by pressing the release button on the back. Each unit comes with instructions to convert it to gentle mode, which gives you an even milder cervical arch. It also comes with a washable, custom-fit pillowcase to always keep it fresh and clean. Use the Cervopedic Neck Relief every day to relieve headaches and neck tension while supporting your natural cervical curve. I personally highly recommend this product because it relaxes neck and shoulder muscles in just minutes, it relieves neck tension and headaches, it reinforces that natural cervical curvature in the spine, and it has easily adjustable settings to choose the exact level of support you need. Use the promo code EXPECTMIRACLES to get 15% off your next order. My name is Dr. Kevin Pekka. I want to make a podcast that exposes people to the true miracles of life and health. All the guests on this show have been specially picked because they bring something positive to the world. They have some of the most amazing and inspiring life stories. These people have a passion for living, healing, and leaving the world better than they found it. There is something inside these people that made them keep fighting through all the tough times, even when people told them it was not possible. They carried on and made their lives beautiful again. And now they are sharing their experiences with the world. This is the Expect Miracles podcast. Enjoy the show. Today on the Expect Miracles podcast, we have Blair Upper Cervical Chiropractor of the Year, Dr. Michael Beebe. Dr. Beebe and her husband, Dr. Evans, have a thriving upper cervical clinic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Today on the podcast, Dr. Beebe shares how she got into upper cervical chiropractic, how she is able to work with the top medical professionals in many different fields using the Blair Upper Cervical Technique, how important it is to get the message of upper cervical chiropractic out to the world, and all of the amazing patients she is able to help in her private practice in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Please welcome Dr. Michael Beebe. Dr. Michael, how are you? Hi, Dr. Pekka. I'm fantastic. I'm excited to be able to have a conversation with you today. Me too. I'm very excited. So Dr. Beebe, where are you from originally? So originally, I'm actually from Connecticut, which is in New England. But, you know, for those of you listening across the country, New England is a, a pretty condensed area. You can drive for about two, three hours and cross two to three states, whereas I did live on the West Coast for about 10 years. And that, you know, you drive for two, three hours, you're in the same state. Yeah, absolutely. How did you like living on the West Coast? West Coast was great. So yeah, I grew up in New England and then moved out to California to go to chiropractic school. I went to Life Chiropractic College West in the Bay Area in San Francisco. I was there for five years and then was up to Seattle, Washington, where I associated with another chiropractor named Michael Lenars and opened a practice with him in downtown Seattle. So lived in Seattle, Washington for five years. And then it kind of got to be time to move back closer to family. And my husband also is another upper cervical chiropractor, Dr. Tyler Evans, and he was practicing at a different practice in Seattle, Washington. And so we decided to transition those practices to other providers in Washington, picked up, moved across the country, and then opened a practice together here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire on the seacoast. And Dr. Beebe, what made you gravitate towards upper cervical chiropractic because it is a specialty in the field? And were you always under care growing up as a kid or was it something you found later in life, chiropractic? Yes. I actually began school thinking I was going to be a veterinarian. So I ride horses, love riding horses, and animals have always been a big part of my world. I actually have a German Shepherd right now named Teton because he loves to hike and he <laughs> has actually been to the Teton Mountains in Wyoming. Wow. And I do have a horse as well. And so I just realized I didn't want to make what I'd always done for fun my job. Mm -hmm. And then started to think about being a human doctor. So I did a course of pre-med 
and I did some rounds at the local hospital and also interned in some private practices. And unfortunately, I was disillusioned by how once the doctors had a diagnosis for the patient, there was kind of this acceptable flowchart of procedures that they could do for that patient. And really, it was dictated by the insurance company. So I was Mm -hmm. seeing these really wonderful and caring doctors kind of be hamstrung by the system that they were working in and kind of didn't seem to sit right with me. And then I actually, at an alumni weekend, my senior year of college, I met a chiropractor. And we were chatting, and he was super passionate about his life and his work. And I hadn't been adjusted or hadn't worked with chiropractor at all before. I knew my mom had gone to one, and she'd gotten a lot of great results. Um, But so I took a year off after undergrad, and I worked in a chiropractic office, kind of saw the day in, day out. Then I was like, oh, wow, you know, this is an opportunity where I can treat the entire public, so kids to geriatric. And I can really help a person's whole body, not just you know, focus on one little piece. And because I have the diagnosis code for that one little piece, only do the thing that's going to help that one little piece. Mm-hmm. And so I thought the chiropractic would be a great solution. So I looked more into it, researched the schools, and then ended up going to Life West. I never had really been adjusted before deciding that I wanted to start to go into chiropractic. And the office that I worked in was a full spine chiropractic office. And that's what most chiropractors out there do, as I'm sure you've probably talked about, where there's more manual manipulative care or adjusting all the way up and down the spine, where you feel kind of a crack or a pop when you get adjusted and you walk out. One of the things that struck me was how frequently people were going into the office and getting a similar thing done each time. Yes. And so I was really thinking like, hey, I wish that there was a technique within chiropractic that might help the person hold their adjustments longer and an ability to say, yes, this problem is related to that spinal misalignment, which is affecting the nerves, or no, this is more muscle tension, or this is a problem in the ankle and your gait, or this is a problem with your eyes and you need to change your glasses and not necessarily needing the adjustment. So I found upper cervical care and upper cervical care, as I'm sure you've talked about a ton is rebalancing the spine from the top down, giving primary importance to that head and neck connection, because the head and neck connection is the most freely mobile area of the spine. And when that's misaligned, it short circuits the brain body communication from a nerve standpoint, and it affects the entire structure on the way down where the body is in a compensation pattern from the top down. And when people are coming in, I'm checking them to see if they need to be adjusted, or if they're holding their adjustment. And if they're holding their adjustment, that's fantastic because we've checked that box. We've made sure that the central nervous system is clear and the the spinal structure from the top down is balanced. But that means if they're still having problems, then I can say, okay, who else can I add to this person's care to help their body fully recover? Whether that is a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or a medical consult or an optometrist. And so that's really allowed us to have an integrative care plan or care approach with our office which I think is what people are looking for. Absolutely. And Dr. Beebe, just to segue into one of the questions I wanted to ask you, how do you bridge the gap between your patients, between yourself and other medical practitioners? Because some people think that, oh, medical doctors hate chiropractic. They don't want to work with it. They don't want their patients getting adjusted. And that's simply not the case. Us as chiropractors have to do a better job of communicating the message. And once you effectively communicate that message, there are a lot of MDs that they're open to sending you referrals because of the great work that we do. So how do you bridge that gap between yourself and other medical practitioners to get them to understand what we do as upper cervical chiropractors? Yeah, that is a a really wonderful conversation. And I think that you hit the nail on the head is there are a lot of great doctors out there that are looking for ways to help their patients. So I'm going to kind of address this on two ways. Like first, if you're out there listening and you are a patient looking for health solutions and you're interested in chiropractic care, there's a lot of resources out there. You can go to icaupperservical.org, which is the upper cervical website. You could go to blairchiropractic.com and look at upper cervical chiropractic care. 
and then inform yourself so that when you're talking to your medical doctor, you can maybe say, hey, there's a technique or a type of chiropractic which is non-manipulative, meaning we're not going to be taking the head to its full range of motion and adding a thrust and creating a pop or a crack. It's very gentle. You're in a neutral position. And with that specificity and that gentleness, we can affect really great changes. So things like headache, head and neck injury, concussion, radiculopathy or numbness and tingling down the arm, dizziness, vestibular issues, vertigo, migraine, neck pain, mid-back pain, lower back pain, those things are definitely in our wheelhouse, as well as helping the body function better by making sure those nerves from the brain can communicate to the rest of the body. And so that's really where we're coming in from a standpoint of communicating to patients and having those patients advocate for themselves to their medical providers. As chiropractors, you said another great thing. Chiropractors have not done a great job explaining what we do to the public in general and I think to the medical community. And it is our responsibility to get the word out there, which is why I love that you do this podcast because it's a part of the piece of the puzzle to get the word out there. And people who are listening, like you can also share this with your friends. You can share this with your family. You can, you know, educate yourself more because there's so many nuances to care. You find a practitioner that you have a good feeling with and that explains things correctly for you. And they're out there. You just have to find them. Like in every profession, there's a few rotten apples in every profession, but we're talking about the majority of people, the majority of providers are good providers that are trying to help their patients. And that is both sides of the coin. There are excellent medical doctors, excellent physiatrists or physician's assistants, occupational therapists that are trying to help their patients. They just don't know that upper cervical chiropractic care is an option or could be beneficial. There are chiropractors that are trying to help their patients, and they might just not know how to communicate to the medical profession in a way that is easily understood. And so I think we are just starting to bridge that gap. But it wasn't too long ago that the American Medical Association settled an antitrust lawsuit. It was called Wilkes versus the AMA, and it was settled in 1987, which is not that long ago. Mm -hmm. There was an antitrust lawsuit against the AMA brought by the chiropractic profession because the AMA, the American Medical Association, did have a committee that was solely for the purpose of defaming chiropractors because we were stealing market share of neck pain and back pain. Really? Yep. Now, that was in 1987. That's less than 35 years ago, not that long ago. So the conversation is, is starting to evolve because now that that's less a part of the medical lexicon, doctors who are coming out of school, medical doctors or physician's assistants, are starting to understand that chiropractic has a vital piece in the healthcare pie. And it's really about explaining what we do and then finding people who are interested in helping their patients get better faster because nobody has a magic wand. You know, no practitioner is going to have the, the single thing that takes all the problems away typically, especially with the more complex cases. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure as upper cervical chiropractors that the alignment of the head and neck is dialed in so that central nervous system can fire like it should. And the, the body alignment is good from the top down. And that's a piece of the pie that we can take care of. And that helps with a lot of symptoms like headaches, neck pain, head and neck injury, mid back pain, lower back pain, radiculopathy. And that can be life-changing for a lot of people. Absolutely. Dr. Bibi, you work with a couple of amazing healthcare professionals. At what point do you send a patient that hasn't been to anybody else but you yet? At what point do you refer them out? Because I know if you get a new patient in and you start talking, oh, I'm going to send you to this person real quick, it starts to get a little overwhelming. And they're like, wait a minute, I just came to see you first. At what point do you refer out? And what kind of places do you refer out to to get that patient better, to get their puzzle figured out? Yeah, that's a great question. So the scientist in me is logical, scientific aspect of who I am. And I like to change one variable at a time. So if we're going to start something new, say we decide to start upper cervical chiropractic care, I'm going to want to give that at least eight weeks before we start to change something else. And so a lot of the providers that I work with, you know, they're booking a handful of weeks out. So I may talk with 
our patients at the four week or five week point if things aren't resolving or I think there's another piece of the pie that needs to be taken care of. But I would say I'd hold off until for treatment until about eight weeks after we started up our cervical care. And then we add one thing at a time. Chiropractic works with the nerves and the bones. And then you might want to layer on physical therapy to help with the muscles and the movement systems. Or then you might want to say, hey, have we changed your glasses prescription? Maybe the lens or the prism needs to be changed to help the eyes feed better sensory information into the brain. 70% of the sensory information coming into the brain comes from the eyes. It's a huge piece of the pie when we're talking about headaches, concussion, head and neck injury, or whiplash. If somebody's soft tissue, the fascia is just really bound up from chronic old injury, then I might want to have physical therapy work on them or even some dry needling because that can be a big piece of the pie where I don't necessarily have the time to spend an hour working on the soft tissue in my office, but I know the expert that is excellent at that. Absolutely. And how did you and Dr. Tyler set yourself apart in your community to be the primary head and neck professionals in your area? Because everybody knows you guys as the head and neck specialist. How were you guys able to do that? Yeah, I think it's just about communicating clearly. So kind of like we talked about where chiropractors haven't necessarily done a great job communicating what we do. And that's on us, and we're starting to change that conversation, but it's a reality because I think there are some chiropractors that say, get adjusted and it will heal everything and you should never do anything that's not natural. And that's not necessarily true. I don't handle my own health like that. Well, I'm sure results speak for themselves too. You guys get great results and it starts to spread word of mouth that that's how you're helping people too. Yeah, results is the most important thing. And so I think clarity of communication, you know, really saying, hey, we do headaches, neck pain, and head and neck injury. And then also we have the technology in our office is a little bit more advanced than what a lot of offices might have access to right now, just because it's a little bit newer. Something called CBCT or cone beam CT, which is a dental technology that chiropractors are starting to use to look at the head and neck junction. And that gives us a 3D image of that head and neck, which allows us to know everything about the joints before we ever adjust with very low dose radiation. And so we're able to do that imaging, we communicate clearly, and then because we do that non-manipulative technique that's very gentle and it's very effective, people are, are seeing good changes in their life and then they're telling their professionals that referred them in that they've gotten good changes. They're telling their family and they're telling their friends. Absolutely. And one thing you touched on earlier that some people might not know of upper cervical is we say holding is healing. So our goal is to give you that one adjustment and have it hold weeks to months to years, which it can. What does holding your adjustment actually mean? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So holding the adjustment from my perspective means that The joint motion, the biomechanics of the joint, good integrity, and then it's not interfering with the the central nervous system, and that is holding the adjustment. How I test that in my office is I use a scanner called infrared thermography, which is measuring temperature on the paraspinal muscles, and if you have even nerve firing, you're going to have more even temperature right to left, so we look at a kind of snapshot of that nervous system, then I look at body balance laying down, we go through ranges of motion, we do muscle reflex testing. And if all those tests are clear, meaning I'm not getting any kind of positive findings, then the upper cervical spine is holding its alignment. The upper cervical spine has good biomechanics. The neurology there is not affected. It's firing evenly right to left. And then we've got to leave it alone because if it's not broke, we don't want to fix it. And can a patient be symptomatic while they're holding their adjustment? Well, absolutely. And that kind of plays into the fact that there is no magic wand, right? So number one, if it's relatively early in the care, symptoms can really be up and down. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes people that come into our office have been struggling for months or years. And so if it's just been a couple weeks, symptoms will still be there because healing does take time. You know, I share with my patients that when we're working with the spine, we've got bones, tendons, muscles, nerves, ligaments. And so all of those different tissues have different healing times. 
where tendons and ligaments, which are the stabilization structures, have the least amount of blood supply, they take the longest to heal. And the neurology of the body has to essentially rewire, and that rewiring process takes a long time. So if it's the beginning part of the care, symptoms can still be up and down. As a patient is further along in care and more stable, there's a lot of general life activities that can be affected. So if the upper cervical spine is stable, but they've just taken a seven-hour car ride to New York City and sat in traffic, their lower back might be achy or crampy. If they are struggling with post-concussion and they've just gone to a movie with lots of flashing lights, yeah. visual stimulus, or lots of sound stimulus, it might have overwhelmed the brain's energy reserves, and that can still create headache or vestibular issues. So there's a lot of factors outside of the chiropractic alignment that can affect how the body feels, and that's where you have to have the chiropractor as the expert to determine if there's a misalignment there, if there's altered biomechanics of the joint, altered joint motion, if that's affecting the nerves, and if it is, we got to get that corrected because it's going to help the body recover, it's going to help the body heal. If there's not, then it's saying, okay, Let's talk about some lifestyle management, or maybe here's another type of care that we could adjunctively work with. Absolutely. And you, myself, maybe a couple others, there's not too many people doing the upper cervical work on the East Coast, especially. Why do you think that is? And how do we think we get more practitioners on the East Coast? Because we have people driving from way too far away to come see us that really need some upper cervical doctors in their range of, um, of driving. They could come from very far away. How do you think we get more practitioners doing upper cervical? Oh, yeah. Honestly, I think that the best way is to help other chiropractors and patients realize how amazing the body is and how you don't have to be manually manipulating all the way up and down the spine once a week for a long extended period of time to see these changes and results. We're here on a Wednesday afternoon doing this podcast. Just this morning, I had a patient come in who was a referral from pain management doctor, and she had failed multiple cervical injections multiple lumbar injections, cortisone injections, radiofrequency ablation in her lower back, as well as in her neck. She has chronic headache, chronic neck pain, pain tingling and numbness down the right arm, pain tingling and numbness down the right leg, and chronic lower back pain. And this lady is brilliant. Mm -hmm. She's getting her PhD in astrophysics, like brilliant lady. She's at the local University of New Hampshire. And, you know, she's doing the best she can to manage, but it took her a long time to find this office. And we start getting her adjusted with the Blair Upper Cervical Technique from the top down. And she's been able now to have her lower back pain 80% improve. She's no longer getting radiculopathy down the leg. She's able to fall asleep at night with much less pain. We just had her eight-week re-exam this morning. You know, we're still working on the radiculopathy down the arm. That's one of the things that's taking the longest, but headaches are improved, neck pain is improved, lower back pain is much improved, and that's in just eight weeks, and she hasn't needed many upper cervical adjustments, so I think we've adjusted her just about five times in that eight weeks, although I've checked her in the office about 12 times. I'm thinking about having a referral to a neurologist to just do a needle EMG study on that right arm. I haven't decided if we're going to, if we're going to go that route yet, but I think sharing the results with people about how you can do less and get more changes in the body with more gentle approach. And then in terms of chiropractors, I would really just say that take the time to hone the craft because as with any medical practice, there's a science to it. You know, we've got to look at what the research says, what, our clinical experience says what the patient wants. That's all part of the science. Then we've got to look at the philosophy to it. And with chiropractic, it's about the body's innate healing capability. And then we've got the piece of the pie that is the art. And upper cervical work, it is an art to manage a patient, to know when to adjust and to know when not to adjust. When it is not due to that spinal misalignment, you've got to leave it alone. Absolutely. And when you do leave it alone, the patient is going to get better stability with less adjusting over the long term, and that's going to get them the better result. And so for the chiropractors, I would say learning that art is the most important thing. And so finding mentors, and whether that mentor is somebody you work directly with, or maybe 
you coach with them for a while, have some phone calls, share imaging once a week. With the digital age, we can email an image pretty quickly, email a case history pretty quickly and get some opinions. I know that you, myself, my husband, we're open to talking with other doctors to try to help them on this path. And then in terms of patients, I do feel bad because we do have patients who drive four or five hours one way mm -hmm. to get a checkup. And that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dr. Beebe, where are you located and where can people find you guys in New Hampshire, all your social media and website information? Yeah, great question. So we are in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which is about 45 minutes north of Boston. Our website is www.aretechiro.com, A-R-E-T-E, Cairo, C-H-I-R-O.com. We are on Instagram at Arete, A-R-E-T-E-U-C. We are on Facebook at Arete UC as well. And we've got lots of information out there on our website, as well as on YouTube. My husband does an amazing upper cervical research moment where he reviews a research paper and as it pertains to that upper neck on YouTube. And again, it's Arete Chiropractic or Upper Cervical Care Arete Chiropractic on YouTube. You could look that up as well. And then you'd always be happy or people are always welcome to reach out to us and if we're the closest upper cervical office, we'd be happy to work with you. If we think we can find somebody closer to you, we can also get you that resource as well. Absolutely. And Dr. Beebe, at the end of every episode, I'd like to ask all my guests, what is one piece of advice that has really resonated with you over the years that you would like to gift the audience? Could be absolutely anything. <laughs> well, it's a loaded question. I know. I know. What a great <laughs> question. Oh, man. I feel like you're going to judge me on my response. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. I'm a person that at my core truly believes that people get out of something what they put into it. And so whether that is as a patient, you're investing in care. If you've been struggling with chronic symptoms for years or even months and you think you're going to go someplace and see somebody for six to eight visits and get a lot out of it, hopefully maybe that happens. There are miracle cases but I don't know if that's going to be a long-term solution. Mm -hmm. You know, as a chiropractor, the path of least resistance is the one that's easiest, and it isn't always the one that's correct. And it takes longer to explain to a patient that, hey, I'm going to tickle you behind the ear. You're going to be in a neutral position. You're barely going to feel anything. When the patient's expecting a big pop or a crack, that's going to take a little bit more education of yourself and of the patient. And so if you really spend time to learn how to communicate that, spend time to learn how to analyze the imaging and how to take care of the patient in the way, in that way, you can get phenomenal, phenomenal results. And so again, what you put into something is exactly what you're going to get out of it. And the onus really does fall to personal responsibility. And that is something that I live my life by. Love it. Well, Dr. Beebe, thank you so much for coming on. Really loved this episode and I'd love to have you back on anytime. Thanks so much, Kevin. It's been so much fun talking with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoy the podcast, subscribe, give us five stars, and leave a review. It really helps boost the podcast and spread the good word. My chiropractic practice is located in West Orange, New Jersey, at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. You can also find us on Facebook at Montclair Upper Cervical Chiropractic. All of my information is on my website at drkevinpecka.com, drkevinpecka.com. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dr. Kevin Pecka for podcast episodes, patient testimonials, and educational videos. I have daily affirmations and inspirational quotes on Instagram at Easel Affirmations, E-A-S-E-L Affirmations. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at drkevinpecka at gmail.com, drkevinpecka at gmail.com. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Cheers.